All right, hello to you. I am Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade, and it is time to check out and track the tropics. We have jumped into a new month, October. Thank goodness we've gotten out of September because it was super busy as far as hurricane season is concerned. As expected, usually historically September, the busiest, most active month of the hurricane season. And of course, we had exactly that. Of course, we had Hurricane Helene slam into the Big Bend of Florida, then rolled up through Georgia, the Carolinas, Tennessee and Ohio Valleys and dumped a ton of rain. At this point, there are still reports of over 100 fatalities due to that tremendous amount of deadly flash flooding and those very strong and damaging wind gusts. So the good news is that we've gotten rid of Helene, but the damage will take a long time to clean up from. Since then, we've had Isaac to a category two, at least briefly. Then of course, Joyce, which was a tropical storm. And we still have Kirk out there right now, which is a tropical storm and is expected to blow up into a hurricane tonight and likely a major hurricane by Thursday. So let's talk about where we've been for this 2024 Atlantic Basin hurricane season. Of course, we started off with Alberto and we are currently up to Kirk. So that is 11 named storms. And let's count how many hurricanes we've had. One, two, three, four, five, six of those have become hurricanes and two of those have become major hurricanes. That's category three or greater. So the next name on the list would be Leslie and then we would go down to Milton and Nadine. Then we've got, still got a whole other row of names that we will have the chance to get to use before this hurricane season is over. Hopefully we won't use too many more of them, but at this point it certainly has been an active last month and a fairly active season so far. Let's talk about what was forecast before the season, during the season, and look at our average number of named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes. Typically in an entire hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, we have 14 named storms, 11 14 named storms, rather seven of those becoming hurricanes and three becoming major hurricanes. So, so far for this season, we've had 11 named storms. So we haven't actually made it up to our average just yet, but we are getting close. Now, of course, earlier on in the season, Colorado State University forecasters and the NOAA forecasters were predicting an extremely busy hurricane season. CSU forecasters calling for 23 named storms, 12 hurricanes and six major hurricanes. NOAA forecasters giving a range calling from anywhere from 17 to 24 named storms, eight to 13 hurricanes and four to seven major hurricanes. So we haven't quite reached those numbers yet. That's a good thing because that means the hurricane season would be even worse. But with the systems that we've had, they have been pretty horrific, especially a few of them, including Helene, which most recently rolled across the US over the last week. In fact, I wanna show you some of this record historic rainfall that some folks across the US had to experience from Helene, particularly Western portions of North Carolina in and around the Asheville and Hendersonville areas and Western sections of South Carolina. Some of these spots picked up anywhere from 30 to 40 inches of rain from Helene, which of course made landfall late last week, Thursday night, and then Friday and Saturday rolled through the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic portion of the US. Over 15 inches of rain just to the west of Columbia, north of Augusta, Georgia, and right around a foot of rain for parts of the ATL. So this certainly led to massive flash flooding, high water rescues. Some people fortunately were rescued, but many were not rescued and there are still reports of potentially hundreds still missing. So we will have to wait and see what happens, but hopefully some of those folks are found, but Helene certainly produced a lot of damage. So the good news is we've gotten rid of Helene, but as we span out into the Atlantic, you will notice a few other systems out here churning in the central and eastern Atlantic. These two systems could actually be a problem eventually. I don't think Kirk is going to be as much of a problem because it is expected to stay out to sea. So that is good news, although it is expected to become a pretty powerful hurricane. Then to the southeast of Kirk, we've got another tropical wave not far from the western coast of Africa, but it could become our next named storm. And that next name on the list would be Leslie. Let's talk about Kirk first, though. And it looks like Kirk has now become 
a hurricane as of this latest advisory that did just come out about five minutes ago from the National Hurricane Center. So now Tropical Storm Kirk is Hurricane Kirk and it is expected to continue to track to the north and west right around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Those maximum sustained winds now up to 75 miles per hour. So the movement is to the northwest as you can see and it is forecast to become a major hurricane likely by Thursday. That would put it at category three and then by the end of the week into the weekend it will start to take more of a northerly turn but look where it is. You've got the U.S., the east coast of the U.S., way over there to the west. Africa, way over there to the east. So it's kind of in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So that is why I am not expecting Kirk to be a huge issue. It should stay out to sea and not really bother anyone. So it should stay east of Bermuda and well to the east of the U.S., even though it's expected to become a very powerful hurricane over the next few days. So let's switch gears and head to the next potential tropical storm or hurricane. This is a tropical wave we're monitoring way out there as well. This is in the eastern Atlantic. This is Invest 91L and notice the area here is in red. That means there is a very high chance that this will likely become Tropical Storm or maybe Hurricane Leslie over the coming days. So the chance for tropical development over the next two days up to 90% chance for tropical development over the next week still a very high 90% chance. So this tropical wave is definitely getting better organized, but even if it does become Tropical Storm Leslie or Hurricane Leslie, it is still well out in the eastern Atlantic, so it would take several days before it would even get close to the Caribbean or to the Gulf. So let's talk about the Caribbean and the Gulf because we've got a big area here that we are monitoring for possible development. You'll notice on our tropical satellite that we do have some bursts of convection or areas of showers and storms right around the Yucatan Channel, Yucatan Peninsula, the Western Caribbean, the Southern Gulf. So any of these areas could kind of separate and start to form more of a well-defined area of low pressure or center of circulation. So the National Hurricane Center and our computer models, not really sure what to do with this just yet. So a very large area is being monitored for possible tropical cyclone development. So that would include the Northwest Caribbean, right around the Yucatan Channel, into much of the Southern and Central Gulf of Mexico. So chance for development over the next two days or so, near 0%, development chance over the next week, up to about a 40% chance. So that's still in the medium category. So not really looking like a hot shot for a tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf, but we still have to monitor a couple of areas where we could start to see an area of low pressure, maybe get a little bit better organized. What does our exclusive Fox model show? Well, it's basically showing what I just told you. Just a lot of showers and storms, kind of disorganized over the next day or two. But you will notice by Thursday, there's one area in particular trying to get its act together and get a little more organized. That's in the central and northern Gulf. You can see that plume of moisture heading towards the Louisiana Gulf Coast. This will be around Thursday afternoon and evening. So New Orleans could start to pick up some heavier bursts of tropical rain by mid to late week. Into the weekend, notice there's still some areas of heavy rain and storms right around the central eastern Gulf Coast. I think there's a better shot there, but some of that moisture will likely make it into parts of Houston by Friday and Saturday. So that is when you can expect more clouds and more rain in the area. But overall, the models at this point are not showing a big time tropical storm or hurricane heading to the Houston area. However, as we check out our forecast rain between today and early next week on Monday, notice that the Houston area in that area of less than an inch of rainfall expected. So models not really showing a ton of rain here, but as you look over towards the Louisiana Gulf Coast, New Orleans, Mobile, Tallahassee, areas that were just hit hard by Helene, including Tallahassee, Apalachicola, in that yellow area, and that could mean another two, three, maybe four inches of rain by the end of the week. Also, central southern portions of the Florida Peninsula in that area of the heaviest rain potential. So those are some of the spots that we're going to have to monitor closely. So overall, there's still quite a bit of action going on out there in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, but we 
are one, we are monitoring it closely and we are going to have that chance potentially for some golf development. But of course, if that happens, we will keep you updated. Good news is that we've now jumped into October and we've got really a few more weeks until the chance for tropical development really kind of starts to wind down a lot more. We can still get development through the end of November. Of course, that's when hurricane season ends, but the chance is a lot lower for the month of November. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that things stay quiet here in Houston and Southeast Texas for a few more weeks. And hopefully that will be it for us as far as being hit by a tropical storm or hurricane. All right, let's switch gears and talk about what you can expect locally for Houston. Of course, we've got a big playoff series going on, the Astros and Detroit in action over the next few days and we've got a lot of hot weather out there as well temperatures in the middle 90s right now in houston but at least the humidity is not super crazy high but it is going to be increasing as we go through the week so most of you sitting in the 90s if you're going to try to squeeze in some beach time this evening it's going to be pretty nice beach weather, but those temps are still going to be on the toasty side in Galveston in the 80s, but no rain expected. Of course, game two of the Astros and the Detroit Tigers playoff tomorrow starting at 1.32 p.m. Expecting mostly sunny skies and temperatures likely in the upper 80s to low 90s. So no major weather issues as you're heading back to Minute Maid Park for tomorrow. School week forecast looking pretty good. Those hot temps sticking around for the beginning of October, but notice the increase in rain as we go into Thursday and especially on Friday. In fact, our best shot for rain will be Friday and Saturday, even Sunday as the Bills take on the Texans. We got another home game kickoff at noon. It looks like we will have a chance for some spotty rain, but of course there's a roof at NRG, so it shouldn't be an issue. As far as our long term precip outlook next week, looking a little bit drier than average, but temperatures will remain on the hot side as they will likely stay in the upper 80s to low 90s. So no signs of a significant fall cold front anytime soon. Models are hinting that we might have a cold front late weekend, early next week that would cool us off slightly, but nothing that would cause you to need the coats or the boots just yet. That will do it for your update. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.